Welcome to Hope Unveiled, the podcast that guides you on a transformative journey toward a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. We are Sunrise Church of Surrey, British Columbia, and our mission is to carry the hope and purpose of Jesus to those who may feel far from God. In each episode, we'll dive deep into the teachings of Jesus, offering practical insights and guidance for your faith journey. Whether you're taking your first steps in faith or seeking to deepen your existing relationship with Christ, we invite you to join us on this journey to embrace the hope that transforms lives. Today, church, we have a very special guest speaker all the way from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, the pastor of C3 Church in Saskatoon and the leader of Legacy One Hip Hop, Spoken Word and Dance Troupe, Pastor Greg Denis. Welcome him to the stage as he comes to preach today. Yo, bro. I don't, I don't know about you guys. I feel like I'm ready to go like play a sport or something. Like I feel like that felt like an ESPN newscast right there. Like I'm my sport of choice these days is pickleball. Has anyone gone into pickleball here yet? I know. I look, I, I I'm only 37 years old, but I'm telling you, pickleball is the sport of every generation, okay? It is Man, anyways, I'm so excited to be here with you guys this morning. Uh, my name is Greg Denis. I'm lead pastor of C3 Saskatoon, and I run an organization called Legacy One. And Legacy One is a youth mental wellness organization. We actually go into schools empowering and inspiring students in their mental wellness. We do it with assemblies, workshops, and we actually now have a 10-week curriculum that's all about building character and resilience in students. Now, here's what's cool. In, S in Saskatchewan, we are the number one mental health resource in all the schools, okay? That's pretty cool. We've been partnered with the government. They have vetted all of our curriculum. And what's really cool about it is it's all rooted in scripture. It is all rooted in the word. Now, we have to be careful working in public schools, Catholic schools all over the place, but um, God has just opened up doors for us. It's absolutely incredible. Um, and this morning, I'm gonna share a little, a few pieces from what we do in our show with you guys, but um, I'm also a, f a husband to a beautiful wife, a father to two beautiful children. Um, if you saw the Instagram post that you guys put out this week, um, I am raising up a Zulu warrior and a Zulu queen right now. Uh, both of my kids are from South Africa, born in South Africa. Oh, we got some South Africans here. Okay, okay, nice. Um, so they're both uh, both been adopted from South Africa, and they are just such a joy. They are nine and four years old. And so with that, this year, um, I started to, to, you know, having young kids at home, I, I started to um, want to start a journey of health. I realized that I want to be around for a long time with my kids. And so I did, <laughs> I went to my health plan, and I'm like, what services do I have available to me that I'm not using right now? Does anyone do that? Maybe it's the Dutch in me, but I'm like, look, if they tell me I can spend money to go see a foot doctor, I'm going to go see a foot doctor. I don't have foot problems, but $300 is there, I'm going to see a foot doctor, okay? So... Anyways, I had, I had some, in my health plan, I had the ability to go see a natural path. And so I thought, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get a bunch of tests done, I'm gonna get them to do blood work, everything, just to see how healthy I am, to see what is going on in my body. So I went, saw the, the doctor, got all the tests done, went back and met with her, and she said, you know, Greg, thank God you're relatively very healthy, um, not a lot of things concerning, but there's a few deficiencies. That's the word she used. There's a few deficiencies in your body, which is preventing you from, from living out the fullness that your body has to offer you. There's some, there's some, some micronutrients that we could help get your body back to its fullest. And so $300 later and a whole bunch of vitamins that I don't take. <laughs> Who struggles to take vitamins? Is that just me? I don't know what it is. Like my wife always hides them in a cupboard where I don't even know where they are. And then I forget to take them. I, we were living, I, I was living with these deficiencies that I was not living to my fullest. Now, we live in a culture and working in our school system, I get to work with young people, I get to see family life, I get to see what teachers are dealing with, and I think that we are living in a culture right now that is deficient in hope. We are deficient in hope. 
Now, you guys are on a journey, this soul care journey, and, and I've actually read the book. I met Rob, um, and I didn't want to just tie into that series from the book because I didn't want to screw up Pastor Chris and his team's all sermon prep stuff and take one of their topics. And so I want to come uh, uh, about this soul care idea from a little bit of a different um, perspective today. See, when I think of the soul, the, the essence of God in our lives, the thing that drives us, I think there are three main components to the soul. I think that Paul does a really good job in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, when he says that now these three remain, faith, hope, love. He says, now the greatest of these is love, but I, I think that Paul has given us in essence what the soul's capabilities are. What is the, 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 the nutrients of the soul? It's the place where we know we are loved. God sees us and loves us. It is the place in which hope dwells. The place that allows us to persevere and push on. It is the place of faith. And this morning I want to talk about this, this, this reality that when we are deficient in hope, it actually has negative effects in our whole being, has negative effects in our, our trying to live out the fullness of God in our lives. And here's the beautiful reality is God has actually given us the vitamin. <laughs> He's actually given us the equation. He has given us the roadmap in which we can build hope into our lives. But before I get there, is it okay if I do a poem with you? Yeah. I always ask. You don't have a choice. I'm doing it anyways. <laughs> Dear Struggle, I'd like to take this moment to tell you that you're beautiful. Now many would battle to find that word usable or suitable to define you and I have to admit, at first I couldn't see it like staring at a graffiti piece. My mind had a fight to find the image so vivid, colors clashing, bashing my central nervous system. But then there, in the middle of the mess, emerged a picture that seemed to pop off the paint and my iris couldn't deny this struggle. It's frustrating the way you hide your beauty. You create chaos to help us see clearly. You shoot arrows so we see the necessity of shields. You burn bridges to teach us to swim and design devastation to build within ourselves the motivation. Your company has been the inspiration to push past pain and gain perspective, a new directive, struggle. You are beautiful. Now don't get confused, you're not a girl that I'd like to marry. On the contrary, a friend I don't mind stopping by from time to time, as long as it's temporary. But please do not stop just letting yourself in, it's called a door. And what's more is, I hate surprises, and I despise disguises. So stop showing up disguised as opportunity, like you're brand new to me. When you know full well what you do to me, you build me up just to knock me down. Promise me smooth sailing just to watch me drown. You cloud my thinking, cause friction between my pride to go on, and my I fear to give in. You blur my sight, starve my fight, and it's only after you've left that my heart sees right. Struggle. You were never the enemy, always able to see what's ahead of me, building perseverance, character, hope through adversity. Your beauty is like an adverb to me. You modify my means, bring greater clarity to my dreams. Your hands hold understanding, demanding lessons to learn from. Your words weighted in wisdom. Your darkness only accentuates the light, for your path promises to ignite a fight in my soul to never give up, never give in, because without you struggle, I will never see success, never contest progress. So consider this. This, a love poem to you, my beautiful struggle. So this is one of the, 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 the pieces that we do in schools. And whenever we, we talk about the beautiful struggle, we talk about the struggles handed to us. Um, the, sorry, we talk about the struggles within, the struggles handed to us, and the struggle to hope. And whenever I'm talking with students, I talk to them about how the reality is hope is an action word. It is a verb. It is not the synonym of wish. Oh, I hope things get better. Oh, I hope this situation changes. Oh, I hope that this happens in my life. It doesn't work like that. Hope is an action word. It actually takes us choosing a different mindset. It actually takes us choosing a different perspective. It is an action word that starts in the mind. And I like to break down because sometimes hope is so abstract. 
You say, oh, I got hope in Jesus. I got hope in Jesus. Oh, I got hope in that situation. What do you mean? I like to break it down for students. I like to give some thoughts around to see when we choose to move in hope, when we choose the mindset of hope, what does it look like? Man, it looks like peace in the middle of chaos. You ever had everything just falling down around you? It feels like your whole life is being torn down and the peace of the Lord is just in your soul. And you're like, I don't get it. It doesn't make sense, but he's still good. That is choosing hope. It is joy in suffering. It is light in the darkness. It is love conquering fear. You see, hope is heaven invading earth. It's the power of God to transform lives here and now. It's that God shapes our future out of our failures. He says, yeah, I, I screwed up, I messed up. I've, I've lived outside of the will of God. And God says, let me take that and I'm gonna mold your future with it because that's hope. Hope is to choose the mindset on which God is guiding you, whether your life's going good or it's going bad. See, there is a roadmap that God has given us to hope. And this is a verse that for 14 years, I've been traveling the world preaching this verse. And just recently, the Lord has given me a, a fresh perspective on its meaning. Romans 5, 3 to 5 says this. Paul says, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope hope. We have been given a roadmap on how to live lives of hope. Now, most of my life, my whole, my whole faith journey began with suffering. I was 11 years old. I grew up in a, in a family with mom and dad. They both loved Jesus. My dad was a baker, which meant he was up early, but he was the one who picked us up from school. He was my basketball coach, my soccer coach. My dad was my best friend. And at 11 years old, my dad passed away from cancer. And he was ripped out of my life. And I was handed suffering. I was handed a struggle that I didn't ask for. And through years of wrestling with God, of, of asking why, why me, why this situation, why my dad, all of these, these, these thoughts and emotions and these feelings, God started to show me how sometimes in life, that our sufferings can lead us to hope. And it took me learning how to persevere. It took me learning how to allow that perseverance to turn into character and that character turn into hope. Now I say it like this because I have been preaching this, this version of this verse for a long time. Yes, sometimes life has us situations but where the Lord has been challenging me recently is that we, if this is the equation, if this is the roadmap to hope, then we don't just wait around for suffering. We don't just wait around for bad things to happen. We don't just wait around for circumstances in which we need to persevere through. In fact, the reality is we get to choose our suffering. I know I came to encourage you all this morning to be a super positive message, uplift your soul. We can actually choose our suffering. We can choose the start of this journey. How many of you have ever lived a lie? You've lived a situation where there's this, this deep lie within you and you can't get it out, you can't tell anyone and that is a form of suffering. Can I tell you a quick fun story? When I was in Bible college, I helped a buddy once like move something or something. And he was like, hey man, I got Cokes in the fridge. If you help me move, you can have a Coke. I'm like, okay, awesome. Helped him move. Um, later on that day, went and grabbed the Coke from the fridge. And then he came to me later that night and he's like, oh man, one of my Cokes is missing. Did you take it? And I said, no. I said, no. He told me I could take it. I took it. Then he asked me and I lied about it. 
Like, talk about just choosing stupidity. That's what that was. And I remember, I said no, and he was like, that's, that's weird, someone then took my Coke. And he started going around the whole, our whole dorm asking people if they stole his Coke. And I was sitting there in my room, and I'm like trembling, because I'm like, I lied about something that I was allowed to do. Like, this is crazy, right? But living a lie is a form of suffering. But so is telling the truth. To tell the truth sometimes means we will live out suffering. How many of you ever told the truth and had to deal with the consequences of that truth? Now let me ask you this question, which suffering is easier? See, it's a lot harder to live the life of suffering and a lie than it is to live in the suffering of the truth. See, this whole journey of faith is about choosing which suffering we are going to participate in. The reality is, it is really difficult to suffer in debt, in financial crisis. It's actually also hard to choose to suffer in wealth. Jesus said it is harder for a rich man to get into heaven than a poor, right? Jesus himself said, look, radical generosity is really hard when you're wealthy. It is really hard to suffer in giving away that which you have built. There's a different type of suffering. Man, being fit, there's a suffering that comes with exercise and eating healthy. I'm not, I don't preach on myself here, okay? There's two people in our church that actually just won like a big fitness competition in Saskatoon. And one of them is in our connect group, it's a young girl. And we went to a few weddings this summer with her. And these weddings had this amazing, just buffet of food, like everything you can imagine. And she would show up with a little Tupperware with an egg salad sandwich. And I'm like, are you crazy? Like, just take one day off. One day, it's not going to hurt you. She's like, no, I'm training. And I look at her, I'm like, no, you're suffering. <laughs> you're suffering. But here's the reality, to live in on health, to live with a body that's falling apart that isn't healthy is also a form of suffering. I heard earlier today that some of you have been doing a seven-day fast. Did you know that practicing the spiritual discipline of fasting is to choose to suffer? Did you know that the, the practice of Sabbath is to choose to suffer? For some of us, just waking up in the morning to spend time in prayer and reading of the word is actually to choose to suffer. If you're like my wife, you like to sleep in in the mornings. <laughs> if you're like my kids, you also like to sleep in in the mornings. I'm blessed. I got a family that just loves to sleep, so I get the mornings to myself. Thank you, Jesus. Okay? <laughs> it's to choose suffering. In fact, when you look at the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus' the most famous sermon, three chapters, Matthew 5, 6, 7, Jesus is teaching us what it looks like to choose suffering. He said, have you ever, he's like, man, to love your enemies is to suffer. To turn your cheek is to suffer. He says, man, you've heard it said if you commit adultery, but I tell you, if you look, look at a woman lustfully, you have sinned. That is to suffer. See, we live in a culture that says, just be you. Just be you. Just indulge with whatever makes you feel good. And there is a suffering that comes with living that kind of lifestyle. There is a suffering. I work with a lot of young, we have a lot of young people in our church, and it's always interesting. You know, I've had a few people recently who this summer kind of just decided to kind of check out of their faith and kind of just started to, to live a life of indulgence and just fill in their life with whatever they wanted, whenever they want. And they started coming back near the end of the summer. And they come back and say, man, that life was so void of purpose, so void of substance. It was a suffering that they had chosen. But to follow Jesus is to choose our suffering. Jesus says in Luke 9, 23, then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Jesus, here it is. He said, man, you want to you wanna be my disciple, you must choose to suffer. You must deny yourself. That is the greatest suffering that, that exists within humanity. Many early theologians, there was one that, that said that to be a follower of Jesus was to die many deaths. I love that. One theologian says it's to live a life of a thousand deaths. It is to live a life where you choose to deny yourself, which is suffering. 
you choose to suffer and taking up your cross daily and following Jesus. Okay, we'll move on from suffering. So we choose our suffering. We choose to lay down our lives to follow Christ. And that suffering produces in us a perseverance. And again, I think Paul gives us a beautiful definition of what perseverance looks like. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, he says this. He says, no temptation. Quickly, what is temptation? Temptation is, is, to, is, to, is to struggle against God's will for your life and your natural desires, your, your fleshly desires. That is a struggle. <laughs> Am I right? Okay, so look at this. Let's put that word in there instead of tempted. No struggle has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you struggle beyond what you can bear. But when you are struggling, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Some translations say so you can stand up under it. This is what it looks like to persevere in the word of God, to persevere with Jesus is to recognize that there is a struggle. There is a suffering in which we choose. And when we choose it, he builds in us. He builds in us the ability to endure it, to persevere through it. Suffering, perseverance, builds in us a character. Because character is not formed by backing out or by giving up. See, the reality is in our culture, I think, before we have a deficiency of hope, we actually have a deficiency of character. We live in a culture right now that wants comfort and ease. We want quick fixes. We want instant gratification. And what happens in a culture like that is we are void of character. Because we do not have people who have persevered long enough to actually be tested in the fire. To actually withstand the struggles of life and allow it to build within them character. Character is what is shaped by God. Right now at our church in Saskatoon, I'm going through a series. It's called Truth Plus Habits Equals Character. And here's the secret. I'm going to give you guys the secret. Every single character that we're landing on is a fruit of the Spirit. That's the character that God is building into his people. And I think that sometimes we think that that just supernaturally happens. Like if I just come to church every Sunday morning and sing the songs, that God's going to just radically give me the fruits of the Spirit. But the fruits of the Spirit are actually formed when we choose the suffering, we persevere through it, and He builds the character into us. See, discipleship and following Jesus is putting ourselves in a place where the Holy Spirit can do the work. It's putting ourselves in the place where the Holy Spirit can meet us and move in that place. So you guys are on this journey of soul care. And I, I listened to a couple of the, the early sermons by Pastor Chris and man, him and, and, and Sherry did such an amazing job of painting this picture of soul care and transformation. They did such a good job of, of recognizing that this is not easy. Transformation is not easy. Caring for your soul is not easy. In fact, it takes a lot of perseverance to build that character, to lead to this place of hope. Can I do another poem for you guys? Yeah. Again, I keep asking. You're not, you don't have a choice. <laughs> I love that. If you said no, I'd be like, well, then I'd feel bad, but I'd still do it. Um, I'm going to invite the worship team to come up. When I'm done this poem, you guys can start playing because we're going to kind of wrap it up here a little bit. But it goes like this. What if our faith was up for debate? And our answer determined our fate. What if what we thought was so great turned out to be fake? Can we afford this mistake? Can we afford to say all the right words while failing to live out an action? Because our methodology is our spirituality, meaning our actions prove our spirit. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying we're saved by works. We're saved by grace. But that grace must compel us to action, to be doers of the word, not just hearers of it. See, we can no longer recite scripture while cursing our brother, no longer stand and raise our hands while refusing to offer God all of our plans. We can no longer put I before he and we before him, falling to the same sin as Adam and Eve. We become them. We can no longer sit back in complacency, allowing the enemy to draw the battle line of attack, no longer able to play timid because, homie, God's love is vivid strikingly bright and intense, right, full of life. 
And we are called to be children of the light, to shine bright in the night. You don't light a candle and hide it under a bed. You put it on a stand for the whole world to see. Clearly, this is the way it was meant to be. God's love shining in us for the whole world to see. And the whole world is waiting anticipating. Not just us, all of creation waits in eager expectation. So how about we take them to the cross where our Savior bled red and then said, it is finished. Death and his powers diminished. So I say to you, death, where is your sting? Couldn't even last three days in the ring. And now our Savior ascends as a king and sits at the right hand of the Father as the angels surround and sing, worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb who was and who is and who is to come and so my prayer becomes not my will but your will be done see if you ask me to debate my faith I'll point you to the one the victorious son and say this debate is already won because I can't use words to defend my faith but watch my life and you'll see I was a sinner trapped in sin but by his grace set free so any faith that I have is because Christ has faith in me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up here, but I want to I wanna, I wanna land here. Romans 8, 16 and 17 says this. It says, The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we might also share in his glory. You go down a few more verses to 24 and it says this, for in this hope we are saved. Let me tell you what I know about adoption with my two kids, the moment my wife and I put pen to paper and signed those adoption papers in South Africa, my son and daughter were instantly citizens of Canada. They were instantly put onto my life insurance. They were instantly put onto my medical care. They were instantly put into my family name, Denis. They became co-heirs of the Denis. Pen to paper changed their whole future and brought them into a new family. It's the way it works with God's family. You are a son and daughter of the king. And your invitation is to share in Christ's sufferings. Let me leave you with this one encouragement because I don't want you to go away feeling too discouraged about choosing your suffering. This is what it looks like to walk with Christ in your suffering. Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, he says, come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. Talk about soul care. You will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is what it looks like to choose to suffer with Christ. Is that suffering, that suffering is easy and light because it is being done with Jesus, because it is being done with his strength and his purpose, because it is being done to build within you perseverance, character, hope. I'm telling you guys, for someone who has walked with God in this way for my hope, since 11 years old, trusting that he would be my hope, I'm telling you guys, it's easy and light because God does the work. You make the choice. You make the choice to follow him. You make the choice to choose in your life which suffering you want to endure with. The suffering that leads to life or the suffering that leads to death. I got a tattoo on my arms. In Christ, uh, life apart, well, what does it say even say? <laughs> in Christ there's life, apart there's death. It was the, the challenge that Moses gave to the Israelites. He came to them and said, he's like, now today I present to you life and death. Now choose life that you may live. 
It's what I love about Jesus. It's what I love about God is he doesn't force it on you. He doesn't force it on you. He says, hey, here's the choice. You choose. How do you want to suffer in this life? Do you want to suffer in doing your own thing, walking your own path, which leads to destruction? Or do you want to suffer in following me, which leads to freedom and glory? Freedom and glory. I told you that my dad was a baker. He was actually the manager of a bakery. And so my dad's picture was on the back wall of the bakery. And every time my sister and I went to go visit my dad at work, I was the son of John, which meant that I got to go behind the counter and take whatever I want. And so it's why I can't get in shape, okay? Blame my dad for that. Cinnamon buns, cookies, you name it. We walked behind that counter and we could take whatever we wanted. Why? Because of who my dad was. Do you know who your dad is? No, no, do you know who your dad is? Do you know what you have access to? Do you know the freedom and glory that comes with those who choose to suffer with Christ? It's amazing. So we're gonna do something that I do at our church every Sunday. I'm just gonna ask you to close your eyes and bow your heads. This is a moment between you and God. I don't know, I don't care who you're sitting next to, I don't care, just you and God. This is just a moment to ask the Holy Spirit to search you and know you. And if you're here this morning with a heaviness, you're here this morning feeling like, like you're suffering but not in the way that leads to freedom and glory. You're suffering in a way that feels like life is so challenging and hard and you're coming against obstacles and you feel like things are, are taking place all around you. For some of you here, it's suffering that has been handed to you. And so my question then is, how are you gonna choose to suffer in that moment with those situations, when life is hard, when life is difficult? But if you're here this morning and you're just feeling that weight, like, God, I don't know where my life is headed. I don't know this path that I'm on. I wanna know a yoke that is easy and a burden that is light. I wanna know a, a suffering that leads to freedom and glory. I wanna to choose to walk in the will of God for my life. And this morning, I wanna choose a different type of suffering. I wanna choose that suffering which leads to life and life everlasting. I wanna choose the suffering where I suffer with Christ, where He is my strength, He is my source of energy, and He is the one who takes care of my soul. If that's you this morning, I'm just asking you right now, eyes closed, heads bowed down. This is between you and God. Would you just raise your hand? So that's me. Just keep your hands up. We're going we're to pray for you. I'm going to pray that the Lord would meet you in this moment. That as you choose a new type of suffering in which to persevere through, that he is going to build into you a character and a hope, a foundation that cannot be broken. Jesus Jesus, thank you that through your blood we have been adopted into your family, into your kingdom, that we have access to your power and your strength, Jesus. And this morning, God, we just come before you asking Holy Spirit that you would give us the perspective to see in our lives where we have chosen a suffering that has led to destruction instead of choosing a suffering which leads to life and life everlasting. And Lord, this morning, that those who just raise their hands, Lord Father, that they, that, that they are choosing to suffer with you, Christ. A type of suffering which produces perseverance, character, or hope. A type of suffering in which leads to freedom, a glory. God, we give you the praise. We give you the praise, Jesus. Lord, that as we live this life and as we walk this path, Holy Spirit, that you would lead us on the path of suffering with you, Jesus. Lord, that we would see that transformation. Lord, that we would live not in a deficiency of hope and character, but that we would live life and life to the fullest. People filled with the fruit of the Spirit, the character of God that in every situation we would see peace in the chaos, joy in the suffering, love conquering fear, heaven invading earth. Jesus, we give you praise. Amen.
Thank you for listening to Hope Unveiled. If you're interested in learning more about what you heard today, or if you would like us to pray for something specific for you, we invite you to connect with us on our website, sunrise.ca.